Oh, goodness. So I said, okay, just let uh, get that hub out of it. Take uh, take an extension cable and uh, mm. connect it directly. I think uh, there should be somewhere a problem, but I don't know where. I will mm. find it, but not, but not now. Yeah. <laughs> At least we have some image. Right, let me, because I was still on my virtual machine, put it aside. I was running so many things at the same time here. Mm -hmm. Close this one. I saw your documentation. That was really good. good. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Glad it helped. Yeah, so I managed to set up my debug environment. Uh, I used the uh, gist for VS Code, the, mm -hmm. the first one you, you, you gave, which, which was the, the, low, the lowest rank. Ranked. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but it, it looks like it looks like actually the better of the two. So uh, yeah, because yeah. that was for individual tests and not yeah. for for the whole bunch. So I said, okay, let's install that one. Mm -hmm. um, where I'm still, I, I went through through the whole thing uh, a little bit, um, and that that is very interesting. Um, well, I'm still having a little problem, but that is, uh, but that I should should be able to solve is with the um, the source maps. Oh, okay. Because it, yeah, but okay, I should be able to solve that because he's jumping sometimes to the JS files because he links directly. I installed with npm ci, mm. so and not with uh, npm link to the Jinaka files. Okay. So right. There, but uh, okay, that should be. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, um, what uh, so for for generating the SQL, you should be good without jumping into the uh, the Janaga JS source. But uh, um, there are some like uh, like parsing the uh, the specification. Uh, that's all done in yeah. in the core, as well as uh, um, you know, the topological sorting, which actually I think is is newer. Um, yeah, I don't think that you've got that. Um, yeah, because, that could load because it. he, for example, uh, which one is it here? Um, let me see. Was it Postgres read? Yeah, for example, the specification parser. That one comes from the Jinaga. Um, Correct. Yeah. 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 So if I want to jump in there, uh, but yeah, I would hope you don't have to. <laughs> it should be it should be separated enough that uh, that you're like, okay, I yeah. get it, I get a specification. Uh, now let's go from there. Because so here in these tests with the SQL four, mm -hmm. we are in fact we have our specification. And the result is our SQL expression. Yeah, our, yeah. our SQL statement to access our database. Yeah, yeah, and and so that code is in the test itself. Yeah, yeah. And then it calls That's the the parser first, yeah. and then the SQL generator. Mm -hmm. But in the J dot query in Chinaga mm -hmm. our query we will we will write it not in the specification language, but in the link language. Yes. So in j.net, we will first translate for, from uh, link, Chinaga link, mm -hmm. to um, specification language, mm -hmm. and then to, to SQL. Um, so not specification language, but uh, specification structure. Um, so there's yeah, there's no reason to generate the text version of it. Um, yeah, but just just the data structure. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then from there to SQL. Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, and because we need the specification also to get data from from the server mm -hmm. from the replicator. Yes. Yeah, so that specification structure um, has uh, two descriptive strings so that uh, um, it can generate the uh, the text. 
to then go to the server. Okay. So yeah. And then in in your documentation uh, on the yeah on the third page that depends how you print it. <laughs> <laughs> if if you go to projecting projecting the current state. Um, there you say Jinaga projects the current state when executing j.query or j.watch. When j.query is called, it first fetches feeds from the remote replicator, and then it projects the current state from the local database. And if you do it with j.watch, it's just the inverse. Mm -hmm. But with j.query, why are we first going to the replicator? Mm -hmm. Because we have an offline uh, device, yeah, um, or a remote device. Um, so I would I would first go to my local database, which is assumed to be up to date, and and project, and then I can reach out to the replicator, which is somewhere on the internet, update my local database, and if anything has been added that is uh, that influences my query, I will update my user interface. Yeah, and the um, the distinction well, there no. is that JDAT query returns um, the results and then they are disconnected. So um, so it gives you back um, the uh, 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 now the projection um, used to give you back just a, an array of, of facts because it was linear and it only got to one fact, but no, um, a, a projection. But yeah, the important thing is that it's uh, it is disconnected. There's no way to notify um, the results that you've then got more information and you want to uh, to provide a better one. So um, so yeah, j.query is, um, is you know, just give me the latest that you can uh, and I'll wait for them. Um, and then once you've got them, it's like, okay, that's uh, that's the best I can do. Um, j.watch is um, the one that is then connected so um, so as new information comes in um, it can update the uh, the watch and so you connect the watch to the user interface um, and so yeah that's the one where we want to hit the local return the uh, the local so we resolve the promise at that point um, go ahead and bind the user interface and in the meantime uh, do the uh, the back end uh, uh, fetch to uh, to get new stuff from the uh, from the replicator. Mm -hmm. But in in that case, um, because often you want to do a query with an immediate immediate result, mm -hmm. whatever that is that you have in your local database. Um, yeah. So wouldn't would it be possible just to have a kind of of sync command, uh, which will fetch all the data for all the queries that that we we know um so that it will retrieve all the the facts make a kind of subscription like like in the in the watch situation and mm -hmm. after that we can we can do query uh, before or after we can do query if we want just to have the latest latest local results we do just j.query if we want to have the the latest latest from the server, we do sync followed mm -hmm. by j, j dot query. Yeah, um, yeah. So a couple of things that come to mind is that um, uh, j dot uh, j dot query, and indeed you know, everything that's happening with the connection to the uh, to the replicator um, uh, could have doesn't yet have, but uh, could have. Um, a uh, a circuit breaker pattern built in, so um, so if we uh, somehow know that we are offline, then it could immediately fail the uh, the fetch, and then that would leave j.query just returning local results. Um, so that's one thing that uh, that comes to mind. Of course, that's not explicit. That is, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the the library kind of sensing its environment. Um, which because is not going to be entire, entirely reliable. Because of, offline, you have to be extremely careful. Um, you can have a good connection, you can have no connection, but you can also have whatever is between good and no. Yeah. <laughs> and, and be very unreliable. 
and that might be a very slow connection um, and then you, you are going to retry and everything is kind of freezing but the connection is still there but the results are not coming yeah yeah if you want to be explicit about it another way to do that is to pass a, uh, a timeout to j.query um, and uh, yeah so that would be a change to the API um, that would be an additional parameter but uh, but yeah if you want to be explicit and say yeah I only want to wait uh, half a second for the uh, uh, the replicator to respond, then uh, you can do that. But then if you pass in zero, um, it'll say, nope, don't even call the replicator, just immediately get from from local. That might I be one way to perfect, go about it. That, that's a perfect solution. OK. So then you can say local only or whatever is reasonable for, mm -hmm. for the one who, who uses it. Some some people uh, don't mind waiting for, for 10 seconds. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, it all depends on what you're doing with your application at that point. So if you're doing a JDOT query in order to um, uh, to produce a, a report, right, don't do that. That's <laughs> There are better patterns for that, but if that's what you want to do, you uh, you want to uh, yeah. generate a query, you know, generate a PDF, and then put it in somebody's mailbox. Uh, yeah, you can wait mm. as long as you need to. Yeah. Okay. For example, if if you if you want to see where somebody is on on a map and the map is moving all the time, mm -hmm. um, then if you don't have have the data, yeah, you just show the latest position. Mm-hmm. But if in, indeed you want you want to have uh, the latest working hours for the salary the salary calculation of last month, mm -hmm. yeah, then you better get a real response from the server. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I like being explicit there. That uh, makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. It's a complicated data structure. I'm still playing yeah. with it, but but it's getting. Uh, we'll be getting there. Mm -hmm. But then you end you end the the documentation on compose projections. Yeah, yeah, I haven't uh, um, haven't finished it uh, yet, but. but yeah, yeah. So this was uh, the next, the next heading that I was going to uh, to start walking through. And actually, th this type of of documentation is very nice because you really give uh, a specification, a, a complex specification with all the possibilities. Mm -hmm. Then you also give give the the model, yeah, the the whole model here, mm -hmm. which is very very useful. Um, and then yeah, the the, the data structure, um, and in the end, uh, yeah, the the SQL the SQL code here, the first one, and then the the second one, uh, yeah, <laughs> the longer version. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's interesting because that way you can uh, you can really see what what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and with that uh, that SQL code, just one you know tiny little uh, adjustment that I made there was uh, to document what each of the uh, different um, aliases actually referred to, um, because when it generates SQL, it doesn't use the labels that you provided as part of the SQL, because that's a possible SQL injection there. So uh, instead, it just generates a number. Um, and so yeah, I just stuck in the comments to say yeah, F1 is the company. E1 is the edge uh, from department pointing up to the company. That's uh, that's nice documentation. <laughs> okay, good, good. Glad that worked. But it's necessary because otherwise uh, it's not working. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so for .NET, um,
yeah, because you are using fast specification is in the in the core library of Jinaga. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, you're you're talking in uh, JavaScript now, right? Yeah. Okay. So that that will have to be translated anyway mm -hmm. to to .NET. Um, yeah, the the parse specification uh, eventually will, but uh, not right away because um, uh, the only time that you convert text into a specification object is when you are receiving a, a command uh, from some uh, some remote client. So until um, we can write a uh, a Janaga server or replicator in um, .NET, then we don't need to parse those uh, those specifications. Like that, but then I have to go back to my debugger here. Read um, my SQL or. I need that composer object. Mm, okay, I see what you mean. Yes, yeah, that one does not exist yet. Um, but let's let's kind of walk through the code and see what it does. So I'll do a share. You share? Okay. Uh, yes. All right, and have to switch. Are you are in the now? Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, so yeah, this is the uh, the specification, and uh, so we've got projection, um, and so this is as of um, now twenty two days ago, uh, which. Uh, I guess it was that long ago that uh, that I went to Utah and and rewrote everything on the road trip, um, but uh, but yeah, that's the version that we're looking at now, and uh, so a projection, um, as it's going to produce it here, um, is a uh, an abstract with a couple of implementations. You've got your simple projection. That is, um, give me one, um, a one uh, fact uh, by its tag, its uh, its label. Um, I should probably change all the names to make them consistent. Um, label is the uh, preferred name now. But then uh, also a da -da, a compound projection, and that is a um, a collection of named projections. So if you say I want uh, to project into a new, and then you list a bunch of properties, um, so that uh, gives you a compound projection. Um, can also do a collection projection, where um, uh, it's uh, it's uh, you then do a um, facts dot all, and uh, and you give it another specification, and it uh, it runs that specification. Um, Brand new one, <laughs> field projection. Uh, this aligns it better with Janaga JS in that uh, you can um, you can select a an individual field. Um, you can specify that in the specification language, um, so you get just the fields that you want. Um, but that you know, up until yesterday was not possible in Link. <laughs> it complained if the things that you were selecting were fields of the facts. And it's like this is silly. This is how people are going to use it. So now you can project fields um, <clears throat> so um, so yeah uh, the the projection stuff is there and that does things like um, there is uh, so the projection is the part of the specification it kind of tells it what it's going to project but the thing that actually does that projection is um, what is that thing called again? Um, 
was it a pr 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 producer? Um, actually, I just uh, I just touched it. So we've got. Let me look at this difference a little bit closer here. Um, yeah, there's our deserializer deserializing the the field. And there's the new field projection. Okay, I think uh, All right. Hmm. Uh, let me. Yeah, let me see if I can remember what this was all about. So we had our. Uh, yeah, let's let's go all the way back to the beginning and see how. Um, how this all works. So let's start with um, j dot uh, query. Come on. Oh wow, it's not helping me out at all. All right, Janaga query. All right. So. Um, first, we, we take the specification and uh, then we do the, uh, the query with the fact manager and then right here, compute projections. Um, so this is where we actually run the, um, the, the projection uh, hierarchy that we just looked at. Uh, and that gives us back uh, an immutable list of product anchor projection. Um, so let's talk about what those three things are. In fact, let's just uh, focus right down on that. So product anchor projection. Um, that is a uh, um, that is uh, three three ways of looking at. Um, where we are in the results. So a product is either a um, a single uh, a single fact reference or a collection of um, well, okay, a, a product is is the uh, the set of named uh, elements of a tuple. Um, and then each element is either a single fact reference or a collection of fact references, a list of fact references. Um, so we've got our dictionary of string to element, and then element is the thing that uh, then um, can be either a simple element, which is just one fact reference, or a collection element, which is a list of products. And so it continues down like that. Um, so that is what product refers to. Um, and so uh, when, uh, when you run the, uh, the SQL, um, it's supposed to return a, uh, a collection of products. Let me make sure that that's actually the, uh, the truth. So here's I store um, query returns an immutable list of products. Yes, I did not lie to you that time. Okay, so um, so now as you're going through these these products, um, uh, what you're uh, what you're doing is uh, you've you've got these in a tree because you've run um, you know for whatever the depth of the specification is, you run that many SQL queries. So it might be that uh, you're selecting the uh, you know the top level um, tasks and then. Um, Within the projection, you're selecting a collection uh, of their names. So, uh, so that gives you a uh, a tree of uh, products. Each um, each product has uh, the uh, the top level fields of the task, 
and then it's also got a um, uh, a collection element uh, that has all the products each having just one field that's the field name so, um, so you've run two SQL queries you've got that uh, that set of, of products and then you merge them together to form a tree and that's what anchor is all about so anchor is another product but it's the product one level higher it's the product of the parent so when you are looking at the uh, um, the list of names then um, each one knows the task that it uh, refers to because that's the smaller product that just has the uh, the task uh, fact reference so um, so that's how you can get from two linear lists into a, uh, a merged uh, result. Projection is the actual C# -sharp object that uh, that comes out of that, and so the projection is the um, the important bit that um, that we want to uh, to produce. So, compute projections. We've got our list of products. Um, pull all the fact references out of it so that we can load them all from the uh, uh, from the store and produce a fact graph so now it's like all of the all of the stuff inside of those uh, projections that it's necessary to you know to rebuild this in memory is all inside that graph yeah. and then deserialized products from graph is the uh, the part that then takes um, you know, all of, uh, all those products and all of the stuff that supports them in the graph and put, uh, turns them back into uh, C sharp types. So this is where we go through the uh, the emitter, and that is something that emits um, code into a cache. So we've got this deserializer cache that is um, all of the uh, you know, all of the deserializers for all of the types that we've visited so far. Mm -hmm. So that way we don't have to recompile all of this. Uh, this generated code on the fly every time we we store it in that cache, and uh, and then it's it's uh, it's faster. So, um, so that much is uh, is already in here for you. Um, so you were talking about um, uh, in Janaga JS. There's a uh, there's something that that does the equivalent um, where it uh, um, it takes a, a a set of results and then turns those into uh, JavaScript objects. Mm -hmm. um, so so yeah, this is the C sharp equivalent. And so as long as you can, uh, let's get back to I store. As long as you can implement that interface and return a a list of products, which is really a tree of fact references, then um, then it should take it from there. Yeah. Yeah, do that as well, and, and see where we where we get with it. Yep. Yeah, the memory version of that. Boom. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We uh, um, we kind of walked through the uh, the in memory version of it, which uh, does it in a completely different uh, completely different way. <laughs> so rather than producing the uh, the set of of uh, queries that it needs and then running them, um, it uh, it just walks through the data structures. Not very efficient, but everything is right there in memory. So that's, mm. I don't know, you know, walking, you know, this is basically depth first versus breadth first, but it's got to, um, it's got to visit everything anyway. So, so that all works. Okay. Da -da. I think that is, I think that is everything that we need to go over there. Good.
goed. Maar, uh, we'll go over that in, in detail and uh, see where it gets me. Oké. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I'll give you a quick update on the um, uh, the defect that uh, that we ran to last time <clears throat> uh, when I was uh, demonstrating the uh, um, the connection from Janaka.net to the replicator. So, yeah, let me uh, let me go ahead and do that share again so that we can walk through that. So. Now we are talking about um, yeah, we are talking about uh, running through this. So um, make sure that everything is up to date there. <clears throat> Reload window. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is just the iOS and Android stuff, which eventually we're going to put some, um, if necessary, native code in there to uh, mm -hmm. make it work uh, on those two platforms, but. Um, honestly, if uh, if SQLite just works on both platforms, we might actually get rid of those platform-specific libraries. That'd be nice. But, but it should, should work on both libraries. But uh, yeah, whether that will be exactly the same version. Um, yep. That one we will have to find out. Mm-hmm. It'll, yeah, it'll be really nice if, uh, if we can just get rid of any um, any uh, uh, native code whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now load in the... Oh, no! Da -da. Oh, okay. I think I keep switching back and forth between machines. So let me copy that path. All right, so there's the DLL. Uh, we've done a Janaga create, and uh, now we've defined a blog um, model, pretty mm -hmm. simple little model. And let's make sure that the replicator is running. So let's open up our uh, Postman, and we're going to list the blog posts. So from that site, Give me all of the posts. There we go. We got some posts coming back. Um, yeah, and so one of them had a concurrent edit because um, I had created this using this code here. And, uh, and this sets up a concurrent edit, introduction to Janaga Replicator, and then uh, changes that title concurrently well, to, the same title, yeah. to both of these. Mm. So. Uh, that means when we do this list, we get both of those titles back as candidates. Yeah. Um, all right. So then, um, okay. So this particular one, though, uh, just does a straight um, single title. Um, and in fact, this has already been run, but I'll run it again. Um, because these, uh, these facts were already in there. So if I rerun, then this fact was already there and it's still the same one. Um, mm -hmm. oh, interesting. Bum, bum, bum. That is, I wonder, no, that's a string. Wow. Okay, that's a uh, a really good find there. Um, it came up with two different um, hashes for the post, so therefore they're two different. Uh... They have hmm. different dates also, and different titles. 
Oh, wait, yeah, you're right, you're right. Okay, all right. Yeah, this is 29th, that's the 30th. That's, that's, uh, yeah, that's the 24th of the previous month. Okay. All right. Yeah, that would have been a, <laughs> that would have been a serious problem if, uh, if it wasn't consistently generating the same hash. Uh, all right, take out that error report. Okay. So, um, so we still have the, uh, the old version of the replicator running. So, uh, so this is going to produce the same error that we saw before. Um, well, first of all, define the specification. And here is the specification. It's just going to um, grab all the uh, the posts on that site, and then for each post, it's going to grab all the candidate titles for that post. Um, and so this is the the new capability. Um, whereas right here, uh, title is the fact of type uh, title. Uh, we can now uh, select title dot dot value. Boom. And so that gives us title that value. So we can select a field. Hey, imagine that. Mm -hmm. um, that's the way that people are going to be using it most of the time. Um, and then, so now let's run the, uh, the query and we should find that it throws an exception. Boom. So that was the exception that we got before. The fact does not contain all of the predecessors uh, of the fact. Actually, this is a new exception that I um, that I implemented uh, to give us a better error message. Um, so, um, so this is as it's building the graph. Um, it uh, it doesn't uh, as it's adding a new fact to the graph. It doesn't have the predecessors of that fact already. The thing is, it needs to build that graph in topological order. So if we take a look at load right now, that is for this particular uh, fact, giving us the transitive closure, all of the uh, all of the pre uh, predecessor facts and that fact itself. Uh, but notice the uh, the order that it gives it back in. Is it starts with the title? Uh, here's the other uh, candidate title, and now here's their common post. And then here's the site for that post. So it's going from the bottom up, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, which is actually a um, it, it's actually a, a random uh, order that it uh, that it comes out in. But in this case, it happens to come out bottom up. But uh, you know, the the point is, it needs to come out top down in topological order. So um, I did the topological sort on the uh, on the server side. So uh, now Janaga dot, uh, slash load is guaranteed to um, to return things in topological order. So let's go back to my replicator. And this is the one that we started 28 days ago. Let's get rid of that. And delete it. There's no easy way to update these containers. Um, no. Each time I have to delete, delete the container, the image, and uh, yep, pull it yep. in. Yeah, that is that's kind of a uh, a Docker uh, deliberate decision. Is that this is um, yeah? You know, whereas yeah, you know, I talk about immutable architecture. This is immutable infrastructure. Um, mm -hmm. That uh, you can't change the uh, the configuration of a running container. So. Um, so uh, yeah, the best you could do is uh, preserve the volume, uh, delete the container, you know, start up a, a new container with a new image, and remount that same volume. Um, yeah. That's uh, yeah, that's certainly possible uh, with Janaga, but uh, I am uh, being lazy, and I, uh, with Docker Desktop, it just automatically manages volumes, and it's going to allocate a new volume whenever I uh, start up a new um, a new container. Which means I don't have any of this data anymore, but I can put this data back in. So I'm not too concerned about that. So now let's get back to um, yeah. that one will do. And let's grab the 
the latest version of the replicator. Download, 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 and run it. Okay, so now that replicator is running, and so now we can go back to Postman. We can list the blog post, and we'll get back nothing. There's no data in there. So let's go ahead and hit uh, Create Blog Post. That way we can have this um, the concurrent edit in there. So that's created. And now list. It's got that blog post with the concurrent edit. Um, if I go through the feeds, so first of all, I have to post the specification in order to uh, to have it cache those feeds um, and then it gets me gives me back the uh, the IDs of each of those feeds and now I can go to load and uh, you can say okay here are the facts in that feed so now it starts at the site and then the posts and then the titles so so now it is in topological order which means that here, when I do j.query, uh, I get not implemented. Why do I get not implemented? Is that related to this? Let's, let's just see. Yeah, OK, there we go. That. <laughs> this is one of those reasons I don't want to be able to select fields. So you can just see. <laughs> the uh, the data without seeing all of the properties of all the facts and their predecessors and everything but yeah so you get back um, you get back a uh, a set of posts so there's the post that uh, we created right here on 930 and there's the post that we created here on 824 so there's the 930 and the 824. Uh, 929. Oh, okay. That's because um, this instance of Janaga that I created up here, I didn't rerun this block. Uh, that instance has all of the facts that it saw before already cached. Uh, in fact, it has the, the bookmarks cached. So, um, so yeah, the only reason that it went back to the replicator is because um, because it failed and so it didn't get a, a new bookmark. But now it's got uh, the latest bookmark. So um, yeah, as I do this, um, it's going back to the replicator with that bookmark and, and the replicator saying, nope, don't have anything new for you. But uh, yeah, if I were to run all, that generates a brand new instance of Janaga. And so now I'm down to just the, uh, the two that are actually in the replicator. I threw away that... Uh, that memory cache because you're not supposed to destroy data like I just did <laughs> yeah so now I'm curious there's the value and what is not implemented Get fact references projector sixty eight. Let's take a look at that in here. Projector nine sixty eight. All right, so there's the not implemented um, because now the projection that I'm getting back here for get fact references is not a simple or compound projection. Uh, instead, let me go ahead and reload this so that I could do a build here. Uh, projection is a field projection. And so that's got to be just like the simple projection because all we're interested in are the fact references, not the actual um, outputs. So we'll just get those fact references from the product. Okay, build that.
Yeah, in my test so far, I ran into a different variation of this. There's a different overload for git fact references. Yeah, why are you frozen? Okay. Let's do this the old fashioned way. Okay, and run them all. And now I get back some results. Hey, here are the titles. Much easier to read. So in fact, I could even do this. Instead of selecting the post itself, I could select the post uh, dot created at. Change that specification. So now it's post created at. And when we run it, Oh, we get another method implemented. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so there's some testing to, uh, to go there. through. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ah, Visual Studio. Why you fail me? Okay. So yeah, I'm going to uh, yeah this uh, this code from yesterday is in a new pull request. Um, so I'm going to continue fleshing that up uh, with some tests. Uh, solve the uh, the problems that we're seeing here, and uh, um, and so yeah, we will have uh, projections of fields working by next time. Okay. You're Should going very fun. fast now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, probably going to slow down a little bit. There we go. Um, because um, uh, I have uh, started my next plural site course, <laughs> okay. so um, so yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be working on that uh, uh, for the for the next few weekends. Um, that is due in uh, mid December, so uh, I'll I'll get back to to full capacity by that time but but yeah in the and meantime i can uh i can finish this out what's the title gonna be uh this is about using typescript uh for react native applications okay <laughs> so get to teach people about typescript which is uh, really cool and uh um uh i i want to make sure that janaga js works with uh um, react native so um so the demo that I'm uh, that I'm building, you know, even though I'm not using Janaga for the demo in the course, uh, kind of on the side, I'm like, okay, let's let's load Janaga JS into this and and see if we can get get things working. And uh, yeah, so far, nope, not working. <laughs> okay. And now, how is your teaching going? Because you you were gonna yeah. teach. Um... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting mix of uh, um, of students. So some of them are uh, are just really getting it. They are they're um, they're working ahead of the uh, of uh, of the class. You know, others are uh, are kind of struggling, and, and some some have just kind of you know, tapped out. Um, this particular class is um, is kind of a an introduction to. So it's. Um, mm -hmm. If you if you wanted to tap out, you could kind of treat this as a study hall, and you're not going to uh, fail the class. Um, but uh, um, but it's it's just I'm available for those that uh, that are really into it. Uh, right now we are building um, a pong game in Snap, which is a block based language similar to Scratch. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, we've got some kids that uh, that have like, okay, yeah, I've got the you know the paddles moving, the ball bouncing, the score, all that good stuff. And now I'm doing power ups, and now I'm, yeah, you know, I'm, uh, uh, you know, changing the colors, and uh, just uh, one of them implemented a uh, um, an AI that you could play against. So it's like, you know, you know, what level do you want it to be at? And at level zero, it just moves opposite the ball, <laughs> so it's really easy to. Yeah, to beat, but then at level four, yeah, it's going to uh, yeah, to jump 
straight to the the ball position. So it's like, no, this is unbeatable. It's just, boom, it's right there. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm having uh, I'm having fun with uh, with these kids. No, that's amazing, and and the fact that they don't have to be there that means that the ones who are there mm -hmm. they want to learn. Uh, that's always positive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and I have I have noticed um, you know, over the last couple of weeks the, uh, some that uh, that have kind of tapped out um, have uh, have you know, not returned, so they were able to switch to a class that's more meaningful to them apparently. So that's good. Um, but uh, um, but yeah, there there have been a few uh, a few scenarios where I I've seen I've seen somebody uh, really struggling to to figure something out, and then you know we just um, yeah, we just you know, talk it through for a little bit. Um, you know, it, it figures you know, figures out a, a small thing. It's like, oh, that started working. Like one of them was uh, was just um, trying to calculate the uh, the angle that uh, that it should bounce off the paddle, and uh, he was just doing three hundred minus the direction, and uh, and so we just kind of talked through, you know, you know, why three hundred? What should it, uh, you know? You know, what should it do? It's, oh, yeah, 360. Oh, and now it bounces off right. Hey, cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they, they, it's not Scratch that you're using for, for them. It's, right, uh, Snap. Snap. Oh, yeah. Don't know, don't yeah. know that one. Um, uh, yeah, I, th I think actually both Scratch and Snap were developed at Berkeley. Um, yeah, certainly Snap was developed at Berkeley. Um, but... Uh, it's uh i'm i'm actually not really sure why there are two you know why why both of them exist but um but yeah in in fact it, when looking things up for snaps i've i found myself accidentally on the scratch documentation and found my answer so it's like it's like these are very similar um one of the kids uh, was familiar with scratch and so at the beginning of class, he said, "Well, can I just use Scratch?" And I said, "Well, let's let's give it a try and Snap." And they said, "All right, let's yeah, you know, we'll do that." Um, and uh, and yeah, he he didn't have any trouble. Um, for this, he actually went back to uh, Scratch, uh, but you know, still still did the game. And that's just because he was already working on games in Scratch uh, before this. So okay. yeah, I've never seen Snap. <laughs> I I used Scratch long ago to to introduce my my two sons a little bit to computing. Nice, yeah. But it it, it didn't work out. They were not oh. interesting at all. <laughs> <laughs> but in the end, my, the eldest now is in his last year of engineering, and he was the one who came up with, "Hey, Daddy, do do you know uh, Jupiter? Uh, how how it all works?" <laughs> and at the time, I said, "No, I don't know anything about that." <laughs> and then I discovered it with you. Nice. Um, and and the, the the last one the last one was also not interested and and now we went for engineering also so hmm. uh, yeah hey did something well, right you have to, you will have to know something about programming <laughs> yeah 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 my daughter was not interested and then she went for art and just like hey pretty good so yeah yeah but that worked out well too pro pro programming is something you can learn art is something. If it, if you don't have it in you, you cannot learn it. I think. Yeah, I, th I think the the uh, uh, the general um, consensus now among those that are that are kind of studying um, skill acquisition is uh, that art is mostly practice. That uh, that it is a skill that uh, that you can acquire, uh, but you have to. Um, you you have to practice quite regularly and quite uh, quite intently, um, quite deliberately. So uh, so probably what we're seeing is if it's if it's in you, what's really in you is the love of it, and that gives you the motivation to practice. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think there are very few just natural artists who can just pick up pen or or, or uh, yeah, a chalk or a brush and, and produce something uh, without uh, without having practice first. Yeah, but sometimes I see children who just start drawing and, and mm -hmm. wherever they, they make pictures which are really nice for, for their age and, and later on they mm -hmm. they study, they, they get uh, in, in beautiful results. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. I was never able to draw anything. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The thing that that uh, that I'm concerned about when when I, and I hear this a lot with uh, mathematics. Um, it's like, oh, you're so good at math. I could, uh, I, I was terrible at it. I could never be good. Um, and my daughter hears the same things uh, when she talks with friends about uh, about art. Oh, you're so good. I could never be that good. Um, the uh, the the danger is that um, if you wanted to be, you could be. Um, and and so if you think I'm not good at it, therefore. Uh, I'm not going to try it. You're you're actually depriving yourself of the very thing that'll make you good at it, um, and that's that's especially uh, troublesome in math because you know kids learn at a, a very early age that they're not good at math um, because it's hard, and uh, and so then they give up on it. Um, but challenging. Uh, yeah, it, that's so for for somebody like me, it's because it's hard that I love it, and. Uh, you know, it's it's not easy for me. It's just this is hard, and so I'm going to to focus on it, and I'm going to uh, um, to to find this problem because you know finding the problem was was difficult, and that that was fun, um, mm. or finding the solution. Um, so so yeah, I think I think reframing it uh, slightly helps to uh, um, yeah helps people to uh, to then decide. Okay, it's hard for everybody. It, do I really want to? Uh, to ex extend mm. the effort. So true about art, true about math. True about programming. About, math, about math and programming, yes. About <laughs> art, I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'll convince you one of these days. <laughs> anyway, I, even if I would have loved it, I would never have been good in art, mm. never. <laughs> yeah, basketball, okay. yeah. No matter how much I'll practice, I will never be good at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but basketball is for very tall people <laughs> yeah. extremely tall people yeah. mm -hmm. okay um, so I know uh, what to do I think uh, go Excellent. further to that boat and uh, yeah and, and then uh, yes yeah, soon I think we will be able to start working uh, on, on the project itself on, on DBS itself then. yeah um, yeah all the pieces are finally uh, coming into place and it's pure.net and uh, still uh, still Xamarin as uh, mm -hmm. yeah as um, the best way to yeah uh, Maui is is now the new Xamarin um, so yeah, Xamarin is is in that phase where yes, it's going to be supported for forever, um, but uh, uh, but all of the the focus is in Maui. Yeah, but Maui, but not not na uh, React Native, for example. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I will I will be playing around with React Native because that that all factors into the Janaga experiment, which I'm going to be starting uh, next year, uh, early next year. But uh, um, and that's that's an experiment where I um, I take individual components and I put each one up on Upwork and uh, and hire people to just build this one component, um, and uh, and so I'm going to be collecting data on how long it takes them to uh, to build the components, uh, how much it costs, uh, what's the the calendar duration as well as the number of hours spent, um, and uh, and then put that together in a uh, um, yeah, in a model that will let me predict, given a a, a description of a uh, an application, how long is it going to take to implement this in Janaga? Um, and uh, so, what uh, you know, the hypothesis that I'd like to prove is that with Janaga, it's less expensive, less risky, um, and you get uh, your results more quickly. Um, so, if I can prove that and I've got the data, then um, then I can go out and uh, and evangelize Janaga. Yeah. Okay. And then we will get to that substrate. Yes. Where everybody's putting his data. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And a nice little side effect is that there will be a community of people out there that got paid to work on Janaga stuff. And they're like, hey, maybe I should do more of that. And these are people who are already making money on their own business by building components. So maybe they will use Janaga to build applications for other people and spread it that way. So, nice little yeah. side effect of the experiment. Yeah. 
in the experiment uh, building user interface components would be would be nice as well uh, yeah yeah I, I mentioned it earlier where for example you have uh, concurrent edits how mm. will you uh, propose that to to user right uh, yeah because if it if it's just the edits itself it's easy just wait two rows mm -hmm. but if it's somewhere in the hierarchy uh, then it becomes much much more difficult to present it in a in mm -hmm. a simple way right yeah yeah do you want to show the user the relationship of uh, mm -hmm. like here's here's a candidate but it came from this one much earlier in history um yeah we we did something like that for um for the namus project the um the administrator um had a a full history of of all of the different uh, changes that were made to a uh, a case um and uh, and so they could see the date and who made the change and how it was related to other changes so it was kind of like a git um uh, history of uh, of case changes um we made a few assumptions to kind of simplify that so that uh, they they couldn't get into this case of uh, of having all of these um these branches if it if it got too compli uh, complex it would just you know say well this this happened at this time and it's it's kind of related to stuff in in the past but we're not going to show you the full graph it's just like yeah that's the uh, uh that's that's the best we're going to show you um you know because we don't want to teach you about graph theory but uh um but yeah then then people were able to say yes i approve that one i decline that one and then it uh, um it does the approval and de and decline in the right places in the in the tree in order to uh mm -hmm. to uh, to get to the the result that they're looking for okay um do you have somewhere a, a print screen of that of that user interface uh I should be able to uh, to pull something up. So so yeah, let me see if I can um, if I can find that for next time. Okay, that would be be great. Because a lot of this user interface thing will be yeah new new stuff that that we will have to find out how mm -hmm. to present it to a, a an administrator and how to present it to just a user. Yeah. Um, because the administrator he, he can. He can be prepared for it. He can be educated. Mm -hmm. but a single, a simple user uh, is not used to seeing the whole history. Right. Um, yeah. Let's see how mm -hmm. it goes. Yep. Indeed. Good. Michael, see you next week. Yes, indeed. I will see you then. Okay. All right. <laughs> see you. All bye right, bye. Bye.